Hello and welcome to this video where we will explore the story of the centurion who witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus. This is a fascinating and powerful account that reveals the impact of the cross on a man who was not a follower of Jesus, but a Roman soldier who was in charge of executing him. We will look at the background and role of the centurion, the response of Jesus to the injustice and torture he faced, the response of creation to the death of Jesus, the confession of the centurion and the impact of the cross on his life, and the invitation to know Jesus deeper and embrace the cross ourselves. The centurion was a career soldier who had risen through the ranks of the Roman army. He was in charge of a hundred men and had the authority to carry out the orders of his superiors. One of his duties was to oversee the crucifixions of criminals and rebels, a brutal and humiliating form of execution that the Romans used to deter any opposition to their rule. The centurion was a cold and efficient man who had seen and done many terrible things. He had no sympathy or compassion for the victims of his job. He was loyal to Rome and Caesar, and had no interest in the religious disputes of the Jews, the centurion had probably heard of Jesus, the Jewish rabbi who had stirred up the crowds with his teachings and miracles. He may have even seen him enter Jerusalem on a donkey, hailed as the king of the Jews by the people. But he did not care about who Jesus was or what he claimed to be. He was just another troublemaker who had to be dealt with. When the Jewish leaders brought Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor, and demanded his death, the centurion was assigned to carry out the sentence. He did not question the verdict or the charges. He just followed his orders, the centurion and his men took Jesus to the praetorium, the governor's palace, where they stripped him of his clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand. They knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. They then led him away to crucify him. They forced him to carry his own cross to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they nailed him to the cross, along with two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. They put a sign above his head that read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The centurion watched as Jesus hung on the cross, bleeding and gasping for air. He heard the insults and taunts of the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, and the passers-by, who challenged him to save himself and come down from the cross. He heard the robbers who were crucified with him also revile him. He saw the soldiers who divided his garments by casting lots, and who offered him sour wine to drink. He expected Jesus to curse and scream, to beg for mercy or to fight back. But he was amazed by the response of Jesus to the injustice and torture he endured, Jesus did not open his mouth to defend himself or to accuse his enemies. He kept silent before the high priest and the mob who falsely accused him. He did not resist the mockery and beating of the soldiers who abused him. He did not retaliate or threaten those who crucified him. Instead, he prayed for the forgiveness of his enemies, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He showed compassion and grace to the repentant robber who asked him to remember him in his kingdom, saying, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. He expressed his love and care for his mother and his beloved disciple, entrusting them to each other, saying, Woman, behold, your son, and, behold, your mother. He fulfilled the scriptures and the will of his father, saying, I thirst, and, it is finished. He surrendered his spirit to God, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The centurion was not the only one who witnessed the death of Jesus. The whole creation also responded to the death of the Son of God. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The darkness covered the land for three hours, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, as the sun refused to shine. The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, signifying the access to God that was opened by the blood of Jesus. The tombs were opened and the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and they appeared to many after his resurrection, testifying to the power of his death and life, the centurion saw all these things and became very frightened. He realized that this was no ordinary man who died on the cross. He recognized that this was the Son of God, the Messiah, the King of the Jews, the Savior of the world. He confessed his faith in Jesus, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. He was contrasted with the women who followed Jesus from Galilee, who had ministered to him and witnessed his miracles. They stood at a distance, watching these things, grieving and mourning for their Lord. They did not understand why he had to die, or that he would rise again on the third day. They did not yet grasp the meaning and the impact of the cross, the confession of the centurion was not the end of his story. According to a possible tradition, he became a Christian and a martyr. His name was Longinus, and he was the one who pierced the side of Jesus with a spear, confirming his death. He was converted by the blood and water that flowed from the wound, and by the words of Jesus that he heard. He later preached the gospel and was killed for his faith. He is venerated as a saint by some churches, and his spear is considered a holy relic. Whether this tradition is true or not, we can be sure that the centurion was changed by the cross of Christ, the cross of Christ is the most important and influential event in human history. 
It is the center of the Christian faith and the hope of the world. It is the power and wisdom of God, who chose to save us through the weakness and foolishness of the cross. It is the manifestation of God's love and grace, who gave His only Son to die for our sins and to reconcile us to Himself. It is the way to experience the resurrection and the fellowship of Jesus, who died for us and lives in us by His Spirit. The cross of Christ invites us to know Him deeper and to embrace Him more fully. Do you know Jesus, the one who died on the cross for you? Do you believe that He is the Son of God, the Messiah, the King, the Savior? Do you trust in His death and resurrection as your only hope of salvation? Do you follow Him as your Lord and Master, obeying His commands and imitating His example? Do you love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself? Do you share His gospel with others, and make disciples of all nations? Do you live for His glory, and look forward to His return? If you do, then you are blessed and you have eternal life. If you don't, then you are missing the most important thing in life. You are still in your sins and under God's wrath. You are still separated from God and without hope. You are still in darkness and death but you don't have to stay that way. You can turn to Jesus today and receive his forgiveness and grace. You can repent of your sins and believe in his name. You can confess him as your Lord and Savior. You can be born again and become a child of God. You can join the family of God and the body of Christ. You can have peace with God and joy in the Holy Spirit. You can have a new life and a new purpose. You can have a living hope and a glorious future. The cross of Christ is calling you today. Will you answer? Will you come to Jesus and be saved? Will you take up your cross and follow him? Will you say with the centurion, truly this is the Son of God? I pray that you will, and that you will experience the power and the love of the cross in your life. Thank you for watching this video, and may God bless you. Amen.